This time on Cholton Weekly, Cholton recaptures some winning form with a late one at Southend, Lee Bowyer finally becomes permanent manager, and Tariq Fosu dishes out a cheeky headbutt, which means he's banned for three games. No, four games. No, he's banned for three games, but he can't play four. Everybody just quickly go on Twitter and at the EFL saying hashtag free Tariq. Okay, let's go. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Charlton Weekly. Now, I have seen a few of you cheeky beggars online who have come at me saying basically you should rename this show to Charlton Fortnightly. Well, <laughs> listen, I'm sorry for the slight delay between the last episode and this one, but I did want to compile a sort of transfer window review and now that the loan window has shut we are able to do that segment so we are going to look right now at Charlton Athletic's transfer business since the end of last season let's get right into that. So what you can see on the screen in front of you right now is a list of our ins since last season and a list of our outs as well so starting off with those ins we've got Igor Vettikelli who has been on a, a two-year loan spell to I think two different clubs and I think the fans are quite pleased to see him back. I don't know if it was a situation where the player didn't want to play at League One level when we initially got relegated, but right now he's under contract with Charlton and he's a player that the fans do like. We like to chant his name and he is a classy player. He shows glimpses of form every now and then and his consistency is the only thing, and I've said it before, but the consistency is the only thing that kind of lets him down. But definitely pleased to see him back in and amongst the squad. Good to see him get some cameo appearances. Can he sustain fitness and like I said, consistency for a sustained period of time in League One, because if he does, and if he was able to do that, he would be an absolute gem in League One for us. So pleased to see him back, and I quote-unquote call this a good signing, even though it's just a loan return. Next up, we've got Lyle Taylor, who was the first player that we actually signed permanently this season. A striker who was pretty much prolific for Wimbledon, had a few good games against us, and was clearly one of the best strikers available in League One. We did manage to fend off Sunderland for him so for me this is an unbelievable signing and he has proven that with some of his goal scoring form and just the way he's played with a real bit of elegance and class about him since he has joined the club so Lyle Taylor for me cracking signing 9 out of 10 definitely. Darren Prattley next up he's a central midfielder we all know we were lacking in that department and then that news was worsened first of all by the exit of Ahmed Kashi and then by the injury to uh, Jake Forster Kasky for an entire season. Absolutely not ideal. So Darren Prattley comes in. He's, I think, 33, 34 years old and certainly looks younger than that with some of the energetic performances he's put in. Really, really disciplined, smart midfield player. And I'm really pleased with some of the performances that he's put in for us since he has joined. So next up, these ones are all loan signings that we've made, starting with Jed Steer. I did manage to get a decent look at him when we played AFC Wimbledon in the Cup during the week and he looked all right you know he looked decent he didn't have the best game he had a pretty much five six out of ten game um, a couple of slow movements to let the goals in but maybe that's a bit harsh on him I'd like to see him get another chance maybe in the next cut fixture maybe if Dylan Phillips has a bad game or gets injured but for now he has not done enough for me to knock Dylan Phillips out of the out of the goalkeeper position for the league games. Next up, Christian Bielik. Now, this guy is a really, really good player. He looks like a player that is, wants to come out with the ball from the back, wants to find a pass. Definitely can see how he's an Arsenal player and a young player at Arsenal. It makes sense to me. But a like-for-like -like replacement to Esri Konza. It does make sense, and I've liked what I've seen from him so far. We're going to get onto his goal a little bit later, but definitely he looks like a solid young signing we've brought in. Josh Cullen then the central midfielder one of the best signings I think we've made this is a great investment and a great replacement for Jake Forster Kasky for the season Bradford fans will know that this guy can spray a ball about he's a really really smart midfield player and he's a little bit more mature for what his age may insinuate so he's 22 years old so hopefully with a little bit more maturity with a little bit more experience in the league he can make even better form for Charlton this season I'm really looking forward to seeing him play more Jamie Ward a 32 year old utility forward signing that we have made on a three-month loan deal 
from Nottingham Forest. He can play on the left, on the right, and also down the middle. He's pretty much, like I said, a utility forward, and I'm looking forward to seeing this guy make his debut. And I think that he's probably just a, a sort of safe signing. I don't think he's bad. I'm not saying he's bad, but he I, I wouldn't call him a panic buy either. He's somewhere in the middle of that. So we needed somebody to fill that sort of role, you know, like a utility forward who can play anywhere among the front, a little bit like Mavadidi could last season, but we've gone kind of the other way with age. So Mavadidi, obviously a very young player who could play that position. Jamie Ward, obviously a very experienced player, and Lee Bayer has described him as an explosive player. So, like I said, I can't comment too much on him until I see him play, but his track record says that he can be a very, very useful, dangerous player at this level. So overall, I'm going to give our ins probably like a 7 out of 10. We haven't made any unbelievable signings. I suppose Cullen, Taylor, Prattley are probably the best and they are close to unbelievable signings, but none have really like knocked my socks off, if, if that makes sense. Um, but I have to say, really good business, really good signings, and like Lee Bowyer said, every single one of these players we've brought in we've brought in has improved us. So pleased with that. Seven out of ten for our inwards business. Let's move on to the outs. So the first player to leave the club was Ahmed Kashi. He decided not to renew his contract. Actually, I don't know whether it was him that decided that. It might have actually been the club not affording to renew his contract. But either way, Ahmed Kashi has left. He was a really good player last year. Came back from a very long injury and did a few little bits in midfield for us, sort of defensive midfield. Swept up a lot of sort of dangerous uh, attacks, created space. Decent passer of the ball as well. Also scored a banger against MK Dons. And Ahmed Kashi will be missed. Obviously, that banger against Peterborough that he scored a few seasons ago, he will be most remembered by. But last season in our playoff campaign, he did play a very decent role when he came back from injury. So Ahmed Kashi will be missed and an unfortunate one to see go. But definitely uh, replaceable in a way. And I think Josh Cullen and Darren Prattley have got that ground sort of covered. So shame to see him go. But yeah, it, is, it was a sort of inevitable one with the current situation financially at the club. Moving on to some of the loan signings now. So Jay De Silva, Ben Amos, Mavadidi, Kai Kai and Zyro. Who am I going to miss the most out of these guys? Probably Ben Amos and Jay De Silva, two players that I would not have batted an eyelid at if either of those players got our player of the year last year. So Jay De Silva obviously did. Ben Amos very, very close in my opinion. And yeah, two players who are playing at championship level this season and I can absolutely see why. Just a little bit of a shame that Ben Amos ended up choosing Millwall, but they are two players that you're not going to get better than in, in those positions really in the league. So a real shame to see them go, but it's, it's inevitable that a loan's going to expire. So we were kind of prepared for it mentally. Mavadidi had little spells of form, didn't he? So not overly displeased that he's gone. He's definitely going to be special. And he has actually got... A, uh, a move permanently to Juventus, which was a bit surprising, really. But yeah, Steffi Mavadidi, I think he is going to be a talent. I think he needs to get more consistency, but he is young. So I think Jamie Ward is probably a more reliable, safe bet in that kind of same position in League One. But Steffi Mavadidi, obviously a shame to lose him as well. Kai Kai and Zyro then, we got them sort of late on in the transfer window. We actually signed them in January last year. Kai Kai didn't really perform for us, which is surprising because he is probably, out of all of these loan names, the biggest name in terms of people expect the most from him in the future, and he just didn't really do it for us. So Kai Kai, you know, a couple of decent sort of cameo appearances, but, you know, not really sad to see him go. Michael Zyro, decent utility forward. I think he actually got a move on loan from Wolves back to Poland this season, so... I wouldn't have minded him back, to be honest. I think he was a decent player, but again, not like overly bothered that he didn't come back to us. Esri Concert and Josh McGuinness, the only other two senior players that went permanently, and both of them I really, really liked. Esri Concert has a slight advantage over Billick in terms of he can play right back, and Billick, I haven't seen that he can play right back so far. But yeah, Esri Concert was slightly more versatile, obviously a very young, promising player, has now gone to Brentford, is starting there in the championship, which is good for him. And a real shame to see him go as a, a sort of youth prospect of Charlton. And Josh McGuinness really divides opinion, doesn't he, among the fans? I think he's a really, really good sort of big physical forward. And I am I am really sad to see him go. However, I do think that we have sort of improved in the striking department in terms of prolific-wise and in terms of personnel. Like We've got plenty of strikers this season. That is not an area in which we are really lacking. So overall, for the outs, I'm going to give Charlton's business a... 
7 out of 10 again. Pretty even because I really do think that McGuinness and Konza are probably the biggest losses. Kashi I don't mind and all the loans were inevitable. We haven't though really replaced Jay De Silva. That's the only sort of bad thing I can say about it. Other than that, just a shame to see some of the really good players not be able to come back and really foreseeable losses really. So not overly bothered and it could have been a lot worse for us in this transfer window. So there we go. That is my take on Charlton's transfer business. A 7 out of 10 for the ins and a 7 out of 10 for the outs. And what I mean by that is I'm rating from a Charlton perspective how intelligent the business was. So when I say 7 out of 10 for outgoings, I mean how smart was it for us to let those players go uh, or was it sort of a catastrophic loss? I don't think any of them were that catastrophic. So for that reason, it's a pretty even sort of, you know, shift around in terms of incomings and outgoings. So yeah, seven out of 10 all around the board. Don't mind it. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and uh, we can get chatting about that. Let's move on now to some actual topical stuff. Injuries. Jason Pierce came back from injury. He's played in our last game. He was a really important part of that 2-1 victory away at South. End. Obviously, we've got Tariq Fosu who came back and then got suspended for headbutting someone. We've got Billy Clark on his way back in the next month or two, probably. And we've also got Ben Reeves, who did get 45 minutes in the EFL Checker Trade Trophy. So positive signs in, on the injury front as well and no injuries outgoing as far as we can tell. So the games that I haven't covered in the last week or so, let's start with the most boring one, which was Cholton nil, Fleetwood nil. Obviously, watch that game. A home nil-nil draw in the league. Absolutely boring game. We probably could have won it, should have won it, I don't know. But from now on, we do we do need to start picking up three points home and away against teams like this. But yeah, it wasn't a bad game. And um, or actually, it kind of was a bad game. It was nil-nil. But it wasn't a bad point considering the injuries. But yeah, I, I think we probably could have nicked it. But we'll move on from the nil-nil games on to the more exciting ones. So next up, we faced Chris Powell's Southend United at Roots Hall. And we managed to nick a goal through Christian Billick, the new loan signing in pretty much the, I think, 90th minute there or thereabouts. It was a great way to win the game. He ran straight over to Lee Bowyer, thanked him for the sort of faith instilled in Billick to start him every game since he's come. And I'm really pleased for that, um, for, for Billick and for obviously for, to get the three points. We really needed an away victory to sort of step up our game from some of the sort of average home results we got before that. And this was a really pleasing result. The way to do it as well. I think Johnny Jackson tweeted that it was one of the best moments for a long, long time uh, for Cholton, for the club, and, and a really good way to win the game. So I'm really pleased um, for, for the boys to go and win that game. And it does put us, I think, now 10th in the league, which is a good foundation to move into September and the rest of the fixtures in September with the injuries uh, and people coming back from injury and, you know, get a few wins on the bounce and start a bit of a bit of consistency and a bit of form. I'm looking forward to it if that does happen. So next up, we played Wimbledon in the Checker Trade Trophy. That was only two nights ago. And this trophy, it does divide opinion. Some people think it's a bit of a pointless competition that can risk injuries for, for the most vital thing, which is the league campaign. Other people see it as an opportunity to give youth players, especially as a Charlton fan, to give youth players a chance and also to sort of give players coming back from injury. I think for us, um, it did serve as the latter because obviously we've got Ben Reeves who played left wing back interestingly in this new sort of three slash five in the back formation that Bowie's going for. And do you know what? Reeves for me was one of the best players on the pitch while he was on the pitch and then Jamie Maskell came on and what a banger this was. Jamie Maskell, I said from mid last season that this guy is going to come through and be our backup left back to Lewis Cage this season. I don't see any reason why not. He did suffer an injury to his shoulder. He, I was in the room for his interview. He, he came across really well. I wouldn't say overly confident, but very humble and a very nice chap. Um, not saying he was unconfident. I'm just saying he was a bit... Um, he's very new to the interview scene, basically. But he's a very nice bloke. He, he, he was thanking all of the, uh, the people, you know, for their questions and stuff. Really, really sound down-to-earth geezer. And the, the goal was just unbelievable. So really pleased for Jamie Maskell. And hopefully he can step on and now put some pressure on Lewis Page to, um, to make some first team appearances in the league, a little bit like Deke still did last season at right back. So looking forward to that. The game did finish 2-2 against Wimbledon. Then for some odd reason, you have to play penalties to work out who gets the extra point. Wimbledon did win on penalties. There were a couple of poor penalties, I think, from Lapsley. I can't remember who else, but key performances, I think Yao did pretty well at the back. 
Uh, Naby Sarr actually played quite well. Mark Marshall, he played pretty well. Um, I think that he, he really wanted to give it his all considering he was left out of the squad before that. Other than that, I've already touched on Jed Steer having a bit of an average performance. And yeah, it was it was good to see some of the other youngsters get a chance. Hackett Fairchild up front, Morgan, Lapsley, Maloney all got a chance. And they all played decently, so it was good in that regard. But I don't know whether we really want to qualify from this trophies, uh, from this group stage of the trophy or whether we don't, given our sort of small squad size. But we'll see how it unfolds. So we are nearly out of time for this week's Charlton Weekly. But there is time for the humorous comment of the week segment. So who are we going to award it to this week? Let's find out. At CAFC Baker, a.k.a. Owen, did say, Feel sorry for the teams in the Prem not witnessing the f***ing limbs when you score a last minute winner in an old school ground. Hashtag CAFC. Enjoyed this comment. I did enjoy this comment and it does make you think you've got to be careful for what you wish for because ultimately we do want to get to the top level. We do want to be back at the top of the championship, going into the premiership, you know, pushing for that sort of area of the English leagues. And sometimes you just got to appreciate a last minute winner at Southend. You know what I mean? So, you know, these moments for football fans can be special when you are lower down the league. So let me know what you think about that actually down below. It'll be interesting to see what would you rather have? These moments in the sort of third tier or, or a bit more of a commercial situation playing in the Premier League, getting on TV, a lot of people talking about you, a lot more publicity. What would you rather have? Let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'll even leave a poll up there. Who knows? Finally then, before we have a look at who is topping the Fantasy League this week, we just have to extend our congratulations to Lee Bowyer, who finally was made permanent manager at Charlton. Now, what does this mean in terms of the takeover? Does that mean the takeover is now further away than everybody thought? Does that mean that it's just to give a little bit of stability to the club and the takeover is still going? Who knows? Honestly, I, I just really don't know anymore. I, I, I try not to stress myself out thinking about it, really. But all I can say is for the short term goals and visions and promotion this season, it's a good thing. It does give us a bit more stability. So well done, Lee Boyer. I'm pleased to see the stability being instilled in that regard. And I hope that that can, uh, yeah, that can have a positive effect on the team. So let's just end things off then with the Fantasy League and see who is topping the league this week. It's Adrian Coma who scored 57 points this week. A decent little team. Aguero and Mitrovic doing pretty well for him this week, as well as a Crystal Palace player, Wayne Hennessy. So fair play to you, Adrian. Well done. You're topping the Fantasy League this week. Pretty good consistency from you. Don't forget, guys, you can still join the Fantasy League. I'll probably shut it and stop promoting it like this after the international break, maybe a week after that. We'll see. But it's coming soon, um, or, or it's ending soon, I should say. But there will be a prize for the winner come the end of the season. I'm going to try and make it something along the lines, and I have said this before, but something along the lines of like a Charlton shop gift voucher, something like that. So it's well worth your time if you are a Charlton fan. So come and join the league. The league code is in the description. And that is all we got time for today, folks. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, let me know by leaving a like on the video. Hit subscribe if you're new around here. And I will see you with another video on the channel very shortly. So make sure you subscribe because it really helps because YouTube's absolutely chaos right now. Videos just don't pop up even though you subscribe to channels. But anyway, that's moaning for another day. We'll get onto that later. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. And sweet.